Hello everyone, I'm going to be showing you how to use Mesh Mixer briefly to help repair your 3D model. Mesh Mixer is an excellent Autodesk software. It is part of the suite. Uh, it's been around for quite some time. Uh, it was, I think, acquired by Autodesk at one point, but it's really awesome to use. It is free to download. I highly recommend it if you're editing 3D scans in particular. It's really great for that. So I'm going to go ahead and take my OWL project file, OBJ file first. So it's kind of cool. You can see it's uploaded and it's on its side right now. All of that red information means, yes, my model is hollow. He has some lines, might have some trouble printing it. So first things first, this little navigation around the screen here um, is going to allow you to navigate around your space outside of right clicking when I'm on my PC. You can always home it. That's our home position there. On the view function here, I have the show grid option. If you just want to navigate about your 3D space with nothing, you can turn that off. Um, you can also show a mock printer bed if that was something that you wanted to use as well. So there's some in here. Um, I'm not going to get too much into that, but you could also do that if you needed to or wanted to. I'm going to take that off. Um, when I bring my model in, um, something you might want to do is to change the orientation of your model using this transform button. So I am going to simply put him closer to being upright and potentially on that bed a bit more. He's above it right now. <laughs> so just something closer to that would be good. Right now that is the front or sort of the, the diagonal view. So you could change that as well. Going back into my transform tool, I'm going to change it around and then get above it. And look, I have that little green tool where I can rotate. So if I click accept, every time I click accept, it saves my settings. So that's something closer to maybe how I would want the orientation to be um, with this little guy here. So that's kind of something cool you can do. It's still a little crooked, not quite on that flat area, but um, that's all right. Other really important tools, the selection tool. I have a brush. Uh, so this was part of my Lazy Susan. If I wanted to get rid of it very carefully using my selection tool, I could go ahead and do that. Press delete to get rid of it. It's going to go about and start getting rid of things. You can also use the lasso tool, select a certain area, again, do the same thing. So that's a useful way to get rid if, uh, of different parts of the model you might not want um, if you want to do it sort of in a precise way. The tool I really like to use to work on this is the transform, or not transform tool, excuse me, <laughs> the plane cut tool. Similar in look, different in name. So the plane cut tool will allow us to slice off sort of at a point where um, we'll get a nice clean cut. I like using this for 3D printing because I can get those nice cuts. Super valuable. You could choose to refill that object in, but for right now I'm going to go with no fill just so we can still see that interior of the, the object. You can also do a slice and keep, keep both sides or slice groups or cut and discard in half as I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now we can see we've got a nice cut there on the bottom. I've still got most of my model there and uh, the background and that extra information is all gone, which is excellent. So just as something to show you, so this is hollow completely, right? There's a few different things we can do to work with our model to make it not as hollow. One of those things I want to show you first is something called extrude. So if I went ahead and I, it's control A to select my model. If I go into my edit button, I see this extrude. So what I'm gonna do is a normal direction. It was set as constant. When I change it to normal, that's gonna allow me to extrude more from my object. So if I look at the bottom, I don't have much in the way of uh, edges, but if I went ahead and said, did five meter, millimeters, now look at that edge. It makes my, my owl look a little puffy, but 
um, that's going to give you that solid edge that you need for 3D printing. Um, just something to show you, to play around with, to take a look at. Um, I can, whoop, yeah. So that's actually remeshing inward. So that's kind of cool too, because that's still going to give me a mesh. That outward mesh is really what I want. When it gets that, those red lines again, that's a problem. But if I just need a little bit of something <laughs> or a lot of something there <laughs> to give my, mom, my mesh some stability, that's something you can look at doing, just to show you. Um, again, you can kind of end up losing some of your model in that way, but it's going to give you that sort of shell that you need uh, to get a really good print. So that's one thing that you can do for in terms of extrusion that's really valuable if you get really into this. You can also make them look kind of crazy <laughs> if you get really moving around with extrusion again. Remember to change it to normal. And you sort of want to have this, this model you could see into um, if you're playing around with extrusion. Just something you can do if, if you think you might have issues with your print. It's very, very valuable. So I just wanted to show you that. So with my plane cut, another thing that I can do um, is actually there is this make solid command. That's going to deal with a lot of things all at once. I tend to use it often. Um, and that's going to make my model solid. Because he's hollow, because I want an object that's 3D printable, this is a great tool to use. So as you can see, it knows right away that I have a hole. And it went ahead and did its best to fill it in. It actually even mash, matched the color information to the best of its ability. Um, I can choose a few different settings. Uh, I could say no colors. If I was like, I really don't want it to look like that, let's do automatic, material to vertex, all these different settings. Solid accuracy, mesh density, um, minimum thickness again. So if I wanted to make sure that, you know, my model was to a certain extent assured that the thickness would be a-okay, I could do that. So this is just another really good tool to use. Um, it will generally work pretty well these days to make your model 3D printable after you run solid. So there we go. That's what our solid object looks like. And then you end up with this sort of interior shell. But um, if you combine these, you end up with a new copy of your model, which is interesting. And if I go and find my, I need to find the right shader. That's sort of a, a see-through shader. So you could see if your model is hollow or not. When you combine the two, you end up with sort of this hollow model. Um, but the solid model, if I look at that, looks hollow right now, but when I actually bring it into my mesh software or to my um, slicer it's going to fill it in and make it look pretty good so that that shader that I use is really good if you're trying to do some analysis and, and take a look at what the differences are between your models it's a good little tool to use I tend to find that make solid command to be super valuable. Um, you can see the walls are still pretty thin, so it's hard to do once you've already made your model solid, but what you could do is go ahead and do that extrusion before you make your model solid and then make your model solid and then you'd have those wonderful exterior uh, built out for your model, which is generally a pretty good thing. So if I was happy with the solid model here, go ahead and get rid of my weird copy one. 
and go ahead and change my shader back to this guy. So if this is sort of about, you know, it's pretty good. The bottom is amazing. Nice. Um, my wire frames look pretty good. Um, this might be something that I could at least give a try to 3D scan. If you had issue or 3D print, if you had issues 3D printing and for example, your model's only printing halfway, your 3D printer is definitely unclogged, you're not having any issues with that, then you'd probably want to go through and give that extrusion function a try. Um, you can have model issues when we're trying to print directly from this make solid command. I'd have them less lately, but that's just something to show you to, to make sure you're aware of it. All right, so just to show you a few other things in Mesh Mixer, you can add other objects to your items, which is cool. Um, sculpt allows you to sort of make changes, add different colors to your item. Um, that's also really good. So you can do all kinds of cool things with that. Stamp selects various parts of your item and puts a stamp into it or on it. Um, there are other tools you can use in your edit command that could be valuable to you. Uh, some folks swear by making their objects hollow. I really like working with solid objects. It tends to make my life easier most of the time. Um, and some other handy tools. You can look up videos for those. The inspector is really handy. If there was any issues with your model at this point, I'm going to take my wireframe off. The inspector would usually have a little arrow pointing to it and tell you what it was. So, and then try to fill it or do what it could. You can tell it what to do. Um, and it would usually show you if there's any major problems. It's not finding any of this model, which is good. Thickness sort of gives you the, that analysis of thickness. So if something's getting really thin in your model, you're not sure it's gonna print, you can do this and take a look. Um, and then there's several other settings. Overhangs are actually supports, which you would use in Slicer software. You can build them in a mesh, mesh mixer. I typically build them in the Slicer software itself. Um, so, few different things in here that are useful in its dimensions if you wanted to see or change exactly what size your object is. Um, it's telling me in millimeters and I can change that to inches. And then, ooh, it's huge now. Um, so what you can do, <laughs> obviously, is if I wanted to see it in inches because I am a much better understander of what a 3D object might look like that so I could convert it. See, it's pretty tiny, um, but oops. usually 3D, you're working with millimeters, um, and you can change these when you're in your software. If you definitely want it to be a certain size and you're sending it to be 3D printed, this is something you would also want to change. All right, shaders. Again, I showed you sort of how to manipulate and move around with those. Because we're working with STLs, I'm often using that first shader, which also sort of gives us that red error, error if we were having any um, issues with our model itself, we'd see them, which is really cool. Last but not least, there's this print function down here, which I don't typically use, but STL. So there's two different kinds of STL formats. The binary, which tends to be smaller, and ASCII, which tends to be bigger. You may see that not be the case with an export, but typically um, if I'm sending something off to be 3D printed um, and I wanna make sure the file is happy and small, I'll tend to use binary format. Um, but feel free to try ASCII too if it's calling to you and you wanna do some more research on it. Um, you could also do that. Also OBJ, next handiest file type for 3D printing in my opinion. STLs don't contain that color information, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a binary STL. We'll call it Al Final. And I'll go ahead and save it. Oh no, I've run out of space. Common issue uh, when you're making these kinds of projects on uh, my excellent file here. So I'll go ahead and save it on a little card that I have. I'll open it up and show you guys how it looks in my slicer software. So let me go ahead and open Cura. And I just wanted to show you last but not least to say, hey, look, you can have a 3D model and actually 3D print it when it's come from a scan. So I will go ahead and bring Cura over here. We'll go ahead I'll go into my handy little owl, open him up. There he is. It's a pretty tiny object. You can also 
resize and do fun things in this, um, but that is in another tutorial. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment or let me know. That's the basics of using Mesh Mixer um, to get your 3D model ready for 3D printing. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.